no alerts of life and love about the need. Touch our hearts anew with love, that we too may love and give. morning. Today we focus on the first ray, ray of will and power. Preparing for our silent meditation, I will read the extract from the externalization of the hierarchy. Page 342 to 344. This specific extract, this specific letter was given in April 1942. The only factor which can successfully oppose desire is will. Using the word in its spiritual connotation, and as an expression of the first great divine aspect. There has been but little of that organized spiritual will sh shown by the United Nations. Their allies are animated naturally by desire for victory, desire for the arrival of the end of this all engulfing world cataclysm, by desire for peace and the return of stability, the desire to end war once and for all and to break its constantly recurring cycle, and a steadily mounting desire to bring to a finish the terrible toll of suffering, of cruelty, of death, of starvation, and of fear which gripping humanity by the throat in the attempt to strangle out its life. But all this determination is in most cases simply the expression of a fixed and united desire. It is not the organized use of the will. The secret of the will lies in the recognition of the divine nature of man. Only this can evoke the true expression of the will. It has in fact to be evoked by the soul as it dominates the human mind and, mind and controls the personality. The secret of the will is also closely tied in with recognition of the unconquerable nature of goodness and the inevitability of the ultimate triumph of good. This is not determination. It is not whipping up and stimulating desire so that it can be transmuted into will. It is not an impeccable, unshakable, immovable focusing of all energies in the need to triumph. The enemies of the forces of light are adept at that. Victory for the United Nations does not lie in the effort to produce this focusing with better effect than the enemy. The use of the will is not expressed by an iron fixation to stand steady and not yield to evil forces. Determination the focusing of energy and demonstration of an all-out effort towards victory are only, where the United Nations are concerned, the expression of a one-pointed desire for peace and for an ending of the trouble. This type of effort is something which is the mass can give and which they do give on both sides of in this conflict. There is, however, a plus as something else which will swing the tide of victory on the side of the United Nations. This will come through the effort to understand and express the quality of spiritual will. It will be the manifestation of that energy which makes the first divine aspect of will of power what it is. It is that which is the distinctive feature of the Shambhala force. 
it is that peculiar and distinctive quality of divinity which is so different that even Christ himself was unable to express it with facility and understanding. Hence, we have the episode in Gethsemane. It is, it is not an easy for me to express its significance in words. 2,000 years have gone since Gethsemane and since Christ made his initial contact with the Shambhala force. And by this means, and on behalf of humanity established a relationship which, even after 2,000 years, is but a thin, frail line of connecting energy. This will force is nevertheless available for right usage, but the power to express it lies in its understanding. As far as may be possible at this midway point in human evolution, and in its group use. I will read it again. This will force is nevertheless available for right usage by the power to express it lies in its understanding and in its group use. It is a unifying synthetic force but can be used as a regimenting standardizing force. May I repeat those two key words to the use of this Shambhala energy, group use and understanding. Mankind has had much difficulty in comprehending the significance of love. If that is so, the problem in relation to the will will naturally be still more difficult. For the vast majority of men, True love is still only a theory. Love, as we usually interpret it, works out as kindness. But it is kindness to the form side of life, to the personalities of those around us, and, fulf and fulfills itself usually in a desire to carry out obligations and not to obstruct in any way those activities and relationships which tend to the well-being of our fellow men. It expresses itself in a desire to end abuse or to bring about happier material world conditions. It shows itself in mother love, in love among friends, but seldom as yet in love among groups and nations. It is the theme of the Christian teaching, just as will, divinely expressed, will be the theme of the coming world religion and has been the impulse lying behind much of the good work done by the, in the fields of philanthropy and human welfare. But factually, true love has never yet been expressed, except by the Christ. You, may, you might ask why, if this is so, do you emphasize this highest aspect? Why not wait until we know more about love and how to manifest it in our environment because in its true expression the will today is needed as a propelling expulsive force and also as the clarifying purifying agent the shambhala energy is therefore that which is related to the livingness through consciousness and form of humanity. We need not consider its relations to the rest of the manifested world. It concerns the establishing of right human relations and is that conditions of being which eventually negates the power of death. It is therefore incentive and not impulse. It is realized purpose and not the expression of desire. Desire works from and through the material form upwards. Will works downwards into form, bending form consciously to divine purpose. The one is invocative and the other is evocative. 
Desire, when masked and focused, can invoke will. Will, when evoked, ends desire and becomes an imminent, propulsive driving force, stabilizing, clarifying, and finally destroying. It is much more than this, but this is all that man can grasp at this time, and all for which he has as yet the mechanism to comprehension. It is the will, it is this will, rose by invocation, which must be focused in the light of the soul and dedicated to purposes of light and for the purpose of establishing right human relations. It must be used in love to destroy all that is hindering the free flow of human life and which is bringing death, spiritual and real, to humanity. This will must be invoked and evoked. And now let's go together into the silence of meditation, working together as one group.
from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masses know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh.